just so hard to imagine being anywhere else. It's really helped me grow and become the person that I want to be. Yeah, I like it. I don't think I want to go anywhere else. Day to day with the children, uh, we aim to inspire them to set high goals and to live according to what they can become. One thing that I notice is that like, when I'm at home and I'm like watching TV, if I watch TV for like an hour, it feels strange because I'm not being productive. And I always sort of have this drive that I have to keep working and working hard to achieve greatness. We require a lot and I think if the bar is set high, then they go high and they can reach uh, you know, a lot more. We also inspire them subject by subject to keep moving and stretching so they're never bored or frustrated. And a big piece of that is, is uh, modeling. The teacher themselves has to love their subject. For example, if I teach poetry, not a child in the school over 30 years would love poetry. But on the contrary, you, it, I'm just amazed at how the kids, boys and girls alike in the eighth grade, love writing poetry. Well, it's because you have a person who loves it they teach it in a way that, that taps into that innate desire to want to learn, and we've got kids who love poetry. I've got math clubs where three-fourths of the children attend my after-school math club. How? Because they discover this math is really cool. I love this. We help you tap into who you are. It's probably my own enthusiasm about it. I mean, it's exciting and I think that comes across when I teach. The really bright and gifted students are also just so inquisitive and it's just really fun to see their eagerness to learn. My science teacher that I had last year, the year before, and the year before, um, her name's Miss T. She helped me go as far as I could. She was really nice and she made me think about being a science teacher because she did it so well and she's my role model. It's not just learning for learning's sake. It is through working really hard at things we don't necessarily feel like working at that builds our self-discipline, that builds our character. My friend's school, she has um, a whole week to do all her homework, but um, our homework is due the next day, so we have to manage our time well and um, make sure that we get all of it done. It really helps you in life. If you have a bunch of things to do, if you just manage your time out evenly, it'll, it's really helpful. I think it's prepared me very well for high school. I'm very confident going into high school. I have learned different study skills and just how to break down your homework time. All the former Birchwood students will come back after they've gone on to high school and say, you know, wow, I have less homework now than I did at Birchwood. And that may or may not be true, but the fact is that they have learned to manage their time well, and they've learned how to organize things, and they've learned that self-discipline of how to just sit and get it done. If you're going to talk about challenge and high levels of achievement, you have to talk about a very loving, warm, supportive environment. I know it sounds counterintuitive. You think challenging, and it's rigor, and it's tough work, and just bear down. But with children, it doesn't work that way. We expect so much out of our kids. And yet at the same time, I, I believe they would tell you down to a child, those teachers love me. Both of us um, have a background in gifted education. That's what our graduate degree is in. So we learned a lot from that field on how to maximize intelligence. Of course, you don't have to be gifted to go here. But we figured from the beginning, um, all children can learn how to think more and um, be independent learners. Probably what makes our curriculum unique or special is we're going to use an eclectic approach to identify the writing curriculum or the math curriculum or the history curriculum that is having uh, children perform at the top level. Test-wise, because we know our curriculum is so solid, we never really have to worry that our students will pass the test.
Birchwood gives you a quality education. Uh, the teachers are great, they're passionate about learning. They're not like those mean teachers portrayed in books who beat you with rulers. They're really, really nice to you. And the one thing that I think is very special is the small class sizes. If you need one-to-one -one personal attention, teachers here can give that to you, and I don't think you can get that at any other school. It makes it easy to accommodate the learning styles and learning speeds of the children. So for instance, I have a first grader who's working on a third grade level. That's one of the special things about Birchwood is we don't put any ceilings on the kids, on their learning. So the sky is really the limit. Besides the rigor of the academics, we're also aiming to help their character. So with the rigors of academics, we are trying to help them uh, grow and develop as a human being. One thing that I think is unique to Birchwood is the character classes that it has in the beginning of the day and the end of the day. It teaches you lessons about justice, honesty, hard work and determination, moral values that are very important to being a great person. We do have a philosophical base and we would draw from a few sources, although as our community has gotten uh, more diverse ethnically, it's also further informed and supported what we do. What's really great is that there are so many people from so many different parts of the world that that's what's normal. You get to learn um, a lot of new things about other cultures that you didn't know. It just makes everything more fun. It's like you're from here, I'm from here. So what do we have in common? What do we have different? That's so cool. What is important is not what religion you come from, what country you come from, what language your parents or your forefathers taught. What is important is what you learn, how you work with others, how, uh, you know, what are the values you stand by. There is a famous story, um, you know, in, in the Zen Buddhism. Uh, they say that somebody went to a Zen master and said, Master, I want to become a great painter. What do I do? And the master says, uh, first become a great man and then paint. We wanted to do for our children, and if you decided, I want to send my kids there, you're making a choice to get an early start with your children. Not to predict what kind of profession they're going to go into. I want them to be a doctor or a lawyer or a business. That, that's some choice that's going to come later in the future that matches their interest. But to have the wherewithal that whatever they choose, they have the ability and the skills and the talent and the strength of mind and heart to go as far as they can and to make a positive contribution to other people.